what's up my Canadian cousins how are you today I am very well thank you um, it is this tis the season for remembrance uh, remembrance day is coming up very soon and it's Veterans Day in here in the United States I did a whole series on it last year and I'll link some of those videos in the description in case you're interested um, <clears throat> but you know this is a time of year uh, as, as well as in the United States Memorial Day in May, that means a lot to me because, um, you know, if you've watched my channel, I think you understand how I feel about honoring our soldiers throughout history who have fought to preserve our freedoms, our way of living. You know, war is terrible no matter what you think about justifications for certain wars that have gone on in history. Those who that have fought have done so in good faith and deserve always deserve recognition. Um, but you know, one of the things I've been wanting to look at for a long time has been Canadian peacekeeping. I, I certainly know about it, and uh, I am aware because I know just as a history buff a bit about the Suez Canal incident which, you know, I'm not going to get into the uh, background and the geopolitics that were at play there and, um, you know, what Britain and France did, how the United States felt about it, what Nasser did in, in Egypt, um, how Canada felt about it. I mean, how Canada felt about it was probably pretty clear by the actions that Lester Pearson took in the United Nations to um, begin a peacekeeping mission, which really was the birth of U UN peacekeeping. And Canada has always been at the forefront of that, and particularly in the 1990s, which I'm, I'm well aware of. Um, as I've come to know you all better, I do know that it is an important part of your national identity, as it should be, as it should be. And so is Remembrance Day, as it should be. Um, it's why you wear the poppies. It's why you, um, you know, make a big deal about it. Um, I, I did read last year... Um, in Flanders Field by the Canadian um, doctor who served in World War One, John McRae. And I thought this was really cool. My, my daughter made this around Memorial Day here in the United States. Uh, I saved it since May, and it has John McRae's um, poem on the back of it. And she learned about it in school, which I thought was very sweet. And I, I really love that. And she understands the symbolism of the poppy and where it and, and the poem from which it ultimately derived. So anyway, my friends, we're going to be looking at and honoring on this Remembrance Day uh, time of year, Canadian peacekeepers and how it all started. So we're, you know, with the man himself who won the Nobel Peace Prize, Lester Pearson. Now, I, I can't say I know a ton about it beyond the generalizations, which I just said. Um, I do know that this was Lester Pearson's brainchild, so I want to like kind of look at how it started and in general just honor all of the Canadian peacekeepers that have served. Um, you know, in Veterans Day in the United States, we do recognize the, the living as well as those who have passed. Um, and it's certainly, I believe that's true of Remembrance Day. Whereas Memorial Day here is a little bit more about honoring the war dead. Um, I think Remembrance Day is both. Um, I understand from just looking it up briefly that over 130 uh, Canadian peacekeepers have lost their lives in various missions over the years since the 1950s. And I would like to honor them on this Remembrance Day, my friends. Okay, let's get to the video and I'll see you on the flip side. Up until about 40 years ago, if you asked anyone in the world what they thought of when you said the word Canada, chances are they would say... <laughs> and it's a great film, Rosemary. Never but it's it. full of all those familiar stereotypes. Snow, water, trees, ice, moose, lumberjacks. Igloos, huskies, and of course, this. I have to do a video about the RCMP soon. I've really been meaning to. It's been too long.
Thank goodness a guy named Pearson came along and gave Canada a makeover. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm not a lumberjack or a fur trader, and I don't live in an igloo. I speak English and French, not American. I can proudly sew my country's flag on my backpack. I believe in peacekeeping, not policing. Diversity, not assimilation. People all across this country cheered for this commercial, and it wasn't just the beer. It's our diversity, it's our peacekeeping, it's our two languages, it's our health care. It's our maple leaf flag. I, I saw that, that. I did a reaction to Molson Canadian commercials. That, 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 was, that was great. And all these things are the result of one man. Canada is the second largest land mass, the first nation of hockey, and the best part of North America. He's our country's greatest statesman. He is our best prime minister by a country mile, oblique stroke, 1.62 kilometers. He's a man who literally saved the world and won the Nobel Peace Prize. He is quintessentially us. He is, without question, the greatest Canadian. And his name is Lester B. Pearson. I know that actor. Where do I know him from? Oh, I will consume anything that has to do with World War One. I. Uh, I know I saw a movie. Yeah, about the Battle of Passchendaele. Um, there was a love story mixed in, but he was the primary actor in it, the, lead, the leading man, for sure. For two centuries, Canadians were Mother England's most obedient children. In war after war after war, we Not followed us. her into battle. And then, just 10 years after the Second World War, another conflict threatened to engulf the world. It was called the Suez Crisis. The Suez Canal, storm center of controversy. This time, England and France had started. War planes are winging their way to Egypt, and its bombers attacked five key cities, including Cairo. Canada was stunned. In fact, one British magazine said that our reaction was like finding a beloved uncle had been arrested for rape. And for the first time in its history, Canada did not say, ready, aye, ready, as England went to war. The fight is over control of oil in the Middle East. It has split the Western alliance. Which threatens Egypt with aggression. Looks awfully familiar, doesn't it? But one thing at least was different. Again, I don't want to get too much into the history of what happened in the Suez Crisis, but it definitely tested the Western alliance for sure. Canadian External Affairs Minister Lester Pearson. He's the world's most respected diplomat, and he's known simply as Mike. He heads to New York right. and the United Nations. Corridors of the United Nations, the buzz goes up. What's he got? Pearson's got something. Can he do it? What's he got? You know, I don't think one The great powers have failed to resolve the conflict. But Pearson has the contacts, the skills, the trust, and he has the ability to find solutions where others can't. A Canadian may well be the last best hope for peace. I mean, he's right, you know, there was so much at stake because the Soviets were backing Egypt or wanted to. The United States wasn't particularly happy with Britain, France uh, about going in. Um, but at the same time, it was warning Russia not to intervene on Nasser's behalf. And it was just such a mess, such a mess. And at this time in the 50s, anything could have escalated into nuclear war. Anything could have, and this was certainly uh, something that could have. And uh, it looks like a cooler head from Canada was trying to prevail on everybody else that cooler head should prevail. And let's get back to the video. The General Assembly is in emergency session. 
and the place is in an uproar. England and France have started bombing Egypt. Suddenly, the world is on the edge of nuclear war, and Pearson finds himself in his classic Canadian dilemma, too. stuck in the middle. In the early morning hours, he makes his way to the podium to deliver what he calls the most painful speech of his life. He hates what Britain has done, but an open break would be humiliating to the country he loves second only to Canada. He must find some way for her to save face. If he fails, the war may spread. If he succeeds, he may achieve a lasting peace. No pressure. A plan for the setting up, with the consent of the nations concerned, of an emergency international United Nations force to secure and supervise the cessation of hostilities. An emergency international peacekeeping force, troops from neutral countries to stand between the two enemies and keep the peace. It's an extraordinary idea, not to just stop wars, but to make sure they stay stopped and he persuades all sides to accept it. And not escalate. He has resolved the crisis. It is his and his country's greatest triumph. Pearson's peacekeepers are the guys who step into the middle of a fight and say, okay, fellas, cool it. And in the last 50 years, they've stepped into a lot of fights. In Cyprus, in Sierra Leone, in Bosnia, yeah. in East Timor. In my understanding that the intervention in Bosnia was really perilous. I mean, it was a very difficult situation. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Canada had the largest uh, amount of peacekeepers in, in there. Peacekeeping has given us our heroes, our traditions, and our place in the world. Because of Mike Pearson, a blue helmet has come to mean peace and hope and Canada. It is our gift to the world. So where did Pearson, the peace guy, come from? As an 18-year-old in World War I, he kept a diary. It's full of the horrors he saw in a medical unit at the front. Mm. The field was a sea of mud, he wrote. The dead and dying would be moved to one side. There was little enough we could do for them. Nightmare days when we all worked till we dropped. Two years later, Mike got out of the mud and into the Royal Flying Corps. His flight instructor... This is interesting. I'm glad they're doing this. Um, it, I mean, obviously, you know, his contribution towards uh, really being the father of UN peacekeeping is so important to the world. And but I would love to know more about the man. And I would love to know more about his time as prime minister. I didn't have to read a biography about him. I am, I am definitely interested. Doctor didn't think it was any place for a kid with the name of Lester. So he called him Mike, and the name stuck. Mm. On his first solo flight, Pearson crash landed. A couple of days later, he was hit by a bus during an air raid blackout in London. These two incidents shook him badly. Something snapped in Mike. And it wasn't just his nerves. The ghastly experience of war had shattered his faith in God and in the glory of the empire. Also from his diary, we spent hours trying to bring some reason to the senseless slaughter. For what? 
king and country, freedom and democracy? These words sounded hollow now. Especially for someone who went through World War I, there, there was a much more identifiable evil, you know, that you're combating in World War II than there was in World War I. It was just so incredibly wasteful. I mean, you know, there's debate that scholars will have, you know, in time in memoriam about whether World War I was really just a total waste of lives, millions and millions of lives, and, and didn't need to happen. Um, but, you know, that's really not the point. It, 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 it was a terrible war, and, and it obviously formed a very strong impression on Mike Pearson. I didn't know that that, that was a thing, but that they were calling him that, that uh, he understood that avoiding war, preventing war, De-escalating war is preferable always to the alternative. And in this day and age, or, you know, particularly right now with what's going on, obviously, in Israel and Ukraine and other hotspots around the world, we still haven't learned that lesson. War had turned Mike into one of the world's greatest peacemakers. We as a species, I'm not talking about any particular nation. There are only a handful of these in the world. It is the Nobel Peace Prize. It's the only one in Canada, and it's Mike Pearson's. And he won it, in the words of the committee, for saving the world. <laughs> saving the world. Now, what other Canadian can claim that? What country can claim that? Oh, yeah, and what did Mike say when he was told that he won the prize? He said, gosh. <laughs> gosh. Oh, so humble. That last, <laughs> unexpectedly, that last bit brought a little bit of a tear to my eye. And, uh... I didn't expect that. Um, it was beautiful. It's beautiful. I do want, you know, like I said before, I just really want to recognize all the Canadian peacekeepers that have lost their lives and that have served uh, proudly and are safe at home now on peacekeeping missions uh, on this Remembrance Day. And um, in looking for this video, I did come across um, a peacekeeping monument in Ottawa. And I'm going to stick with me for a few minutes, my friends, because I really do want to take a, a closer look. I saw some still pictures of it, and I want to uh, look at this very short video about it. Okay, my friends, I think it's worthwhile, and I hope you, you stay with me. Although the title of this work is Reconciliation, most people know it as the Peacekeeping Monument. It's dedicated to all Canadian peacekeepers, past and present. The concept of peacekeeping, using soldiers to prevent armed conflict, grew out of the United Nations, the international agency formed in the wake of World War II. Former Canadian Prime Minister Lester B. Pearson promoted the idea of an international peacekeeping force under the direction of the United Nations. His diplomatic efforts later earned him an Already, I'm appreciating the beauty of this, and I really want to go to Ottawa at some point because I, you know, looked at the changing of the guard of the unknown soldier at, at the Cenotaph, and government buildings look very interesting to me, Parliament Hill. But this is very artistic, and this is, you know, reminiscent in a very different way, but of the artistry of the Vimy Ridge Memorial, which I did a video on Vimy Ridge, and I know how important that is to Canada. Um, as, as was Passchendaele, as I recognized that actor from, and I uh, assume that was probably a Canadian production because it was about Canadian soldiers at that battle. But look at these guys standing on a brick wall, you know, standing guard. Um, the symbolism of it is poignant and it's important. Like symbolism of these monuments and memorials are very important. And 
sometimes you can just choose the right person to design them. And I think that was done at Vimy Ridge is so powerful. Um, and uh, I'm just, in, you know, I, I, I appreciate the symbolism of this, this walled structure with these Canadian peacekeepers standing on them, looking both ways, because that shows, I believe in my mind, that shows the neutrality of them, you know, standing guard in both directions and being, you know, uh, both literally here as standing on a wall, but, but being more figurative, figuratively representative of the wall between the belligerents to keep the peace. Nobel Peace Prize. As of today, more than 120,000 Canadian soldiers have served in peacekeeping operations around the world. This artwork is full of powerful symbolism. At the base of the monument are a series of broken walls, the debris of war. Two ridges rise above and converge at a high point, symbolizing the resolution that peacekeeping makes possible. Standing on the ridge are three peacekeepers, a woman and two men, who gaze toward a peaceful future, represented by a grove of oak trees. The number of trees, 12, symbolizes the 10 provinces and two territories that comprised Canada when the monument was created in 1992. The placement of this okay. monument across from the National Gallery of Canada and along the ceremonial route known as Confederation Boulevard emphasizes the importance of Canadian values of freedom, human rights and peace and of peacekeeping to Canadians. Well, my friends, well, oh, well, I uh, thank you for joining me on this. Um, I really believe that these videos are among the most important that I do. I am going to keep the Canadian peacekeepers in my heart and in my mind for this Remembrance Day, this Veterans Day, and to all of you Canadian veterans out there, um, I sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for your service. And I hope I can say that to you as a fellow North American, as a person from an allied nation. Uh, I just respect the heck out of the Canadian military um, and all you do. And I hope that we find the light that Canada has provided in the first place to guide us towards peaceful resolutions and peacekeeping. Um, God, we need it. Boy, do we need it. All right, my friends, thank you so much. And I will see you soon. Stay tuned for more, a couple more videos on Remembrance Day topics. Peace, my friends.